Kat here to talk more about arrays. We're now looking at something called 2D arrays. So let's have a squiz at what they might be. A 2D array can basically be viewed as a grid. So let's say for example we've got three arrays and each array has four items. So, so this is an array with three rows with four items each. Okay, now let's have a look to, to make it make more sense, let's have a look at a little scenario where something like that could be used. Okay, so starting with our grid, let's say for example we've got three students. We've got student number zero, student number one, and student number two. And student number zero on test one got 10, 30, 82, and 49% respectively. Then maybe student number one got 88, 25, 72, and 56. And maybe student number two got 30, 52, 37, and maybe 49. So that was on test zero, test one, test two, and test three. So this allows us to collect all that information together and it's up to us to know perhaps who student zero is, who student one is, and who student two is, and what the content of test zero, test one, test two, and test three were. But we can collect that information in one 2D array. The number of rows can be whatever length you decide, but each of those rows must be of the same length. So I couldn't have um, three here, four here, and two here. They all need to be four long. If they had no content, I'd just put zero in them, uh, but they do need to be all of the same length and all of the same type. So to look at how I might declare that, I would have said int then normally I put the square brackets to indicate that it's an array, but this being a 2D array, I put two sets of square brackets. Then I might call it test results. And using the shorthand version, I can then put the equal sign, and then I put the curly braces, and I'll put a closed curly braces and a semicolon. Now each of those actual arrays, I then put in their own set of curly braces, separated by a comma. So that first student would have been 10, 30, 82, and 49. The second student would have been 88, 25, 72, and 56. And the third student would have been 30, 52, 37, and 49. Okay, so these are the rows and so that each student and these are the test results per student. Okay, let's have a quick look on Eclipse and how to use this one. Okay, looking in Eclipse I've got my arrays project and within there I've just created a new class called Arrays 2D and I set it up as just a basic template. Uh, the reason I called it Arrays 2D instead of 2D Arrays was a number is an illegal character for the start of a class name. Okay, so I can't put a number at the start of a name. That is an illegal, uh, illegal behavior. Okay, so looking at the example we were just dealing with, we first of all declare the 2D Array. So I'm gonna say int, and square brackets indicates it's an array. The second set of square brackets indicates it is a 2D array. I'm gonna have my equals and my curly brace. And every time I put in an open curly brace, it gives me a closed curly brace to match that. So 
I have to put all my content within those two. So the first student was 10, 30, 82, and 49. Close that curly brace and have a comma. So we're going to have, if we've got three students, we're going to have three sets that look like that, and they're all going to be inside another set of curly braces. So student two was 88, 25, 72, and 56. Close the curly brace, separate with a comma. And the third one was 30, 52, 37, and 49. Close with the curly brace. Ooh. Um, because it's the last one in the collection, we don't end that one with a comma. Okay, we're still getting errors. Oh, I forgot to give it a name. Um, I'm calling this array test result or test results. Okay, so you declare the type, remembering that that type is the same for everything that is going into that 2D array. Two sets of square brackets to indicate a 2D array. Give it a name. Have a pair of curly braces and within that, each set of results for the students. Okay, so I'm just going to make that curly brace look like it belongs to something. So I'll pop it up there. Okay, um, just in preparation for the fact that I'm later on going to want feedback, I'm going to set up an X position variable and a Y position variable to use in my drawstring. So I'm just going to declare those there and I'll give them values in a moment. Okay, let's start off by giving them both values, set them both at 20. Okay, and I'll explain exactly how they get used in a moment. Okay, so what we need to do is as we want to access each of those array items, if we had a for loop, we could either go through each of the rows or we could go through each of the columns. Okay, so I'm using interchangeably the terms rows for the students and columns are for the test, uh, the individual test results. Okay, so I've just put those in as comments to remember which one's which. So that is a row or a student. This one, two, three, four, they are columns and they are individual test results. Okay, so one for loop would allow me to go through either the rows or the columns. I want to do both. So this is already tweaking for me that perhaps I need a double for loop. So one to loop through the rows and one to loop through the item per row. So my outer loop goes through, so I'm going to declare this one as row. The outer loop goes through each of the rows. Okay, so first of all, I'll look at this one, then I'll look at this one, then I'll look at this one. So my normal loop is row starts at zero and it continues um, until it is less than the length of the array and it will increase in value one per loop. Okay, that will allow me to go through each of those columns, uh, sorry, each of those rows, so per student. Now, while I'm looking at student zero, I want to look at the test results for student zero. So my second loop goes through the columns. So I declare this one as int column, and then I continue looping with this one while column is less than test results dot length. And I'll increase by column now I'm going to point out something here straight away. I'll just put in my curly braces. 
testresults.length tells me how many rows there are. But there are three rows and four columns. So if I want to be able to go for the length, if I want this loop to go through all of the columns, I need to specify that I'm actually looking at the length of this as opposed to how many rows there are in the array. Hopefully that makes a bit of sense. Now I use zero in there. It wouldn't matter if I used zero, one or two because with the array, each of those rows have the same number of items in them. So as a default, I generally just use zero. They're all the same length. You can use any valid number if you like. But as I said, it's just a habit to use zero. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. So as this goes into the loop, this for loop says I'm currently looking at row zero. This loop then allows me to look at this item, then this item, then this item, then this item. And then after that, my test condition is false. That for loop finishes. And then I go back to the outer loop, which then increments and allows me to look at the next student. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put in a drawstring there that's going to allow us to print out the results. So because it's an integer, we have to give it a dummy string first. Then we're going to print out test results. Now, as we saw with the arrays, the original arrays, you need to then specify which result you want to print out. And we put that in the bracket, in the square brackets. So with our traditional for loops, our 1D, uh, 1D arrays in a for loop, we've used the variable i. We're now using row and column. The first one is for the row, the second one is for the column. If you make a habit of giving these variables when you have to do the nested for loop for a 2D array, if you make the, it a habit to use row and column, it's generally easier to remember what order you have to put them in. Okay, so then I need to print those out at XPOS and YPOS. Okay, now we have to look at where and how we are going to increase our values of XPOS and YPOS. I would like my array to print out, I'm just going to put a quick comment here, I would like it to print out item 1, item 2, item 3, item 4 for the first person, then item 1, 2, 3 and 4 and so on. So what happens is I want to increase my Y for each new row. That means that happens outside of that for loop. So Y pos equals Y pos plus 20. Um, but I want to move across the screen while I'm still looking at the current row. And that means I need to put that inside the inner for loop. As well as that, as I progress down to the next row, I want it to be horizontally, okay, that messed up a little bit there, I want it, them to be horizontally in line with each other. That means that as it progresses to the next row, I need to set the XPOS back to its original position of 20. So I'm just going to delete those comments there. So now, by rights, this should print out in a pretty little grid. So let's have a quick look and see if we've achieved that goal. Okay, there is our for loop. Uh, sorry, our the output of our 2D array. Scroll up a bit there. Student. Oh, I can't make it disappear. Student zero or student one, however you want to refer to it, got 10, 30, 82, and 49. The second student, 88, 25, 72, and 56, and the third student there. So we've printed out the contents as it was asked for. Now let's say, for example, we wanted to tally the results per student. What we could do is we could put in an additional array item in each of these rows, or we could have a separate array. 
I'd probably opt for a separate array um, just to separate it out as being a cumulative score or an added together score as opposed to separate items. So I might make another array and say sum. Oh, sorry, and I've got to say how big that array is going to be. So it's a new int with three items. So the common factor is that there are three rows, three students, and that means that my sum array also needs to have three results, so one per student. So let's have a quick look down here. And I'm actually going to use something that I've already got. So I'm going to just copy that double for loop and I might paste it in underneath. But this second for loop is being uh, used to calculate the sum of the scores per student. So I'm actually going to delete all my drawstring stuff because that's what it's not being used for. So what I can do here is I can say sum for whichever student I'm currently looking at is equal to whatever the current sum is. So obviously the first time around that's equal to zero. And I want to add on to that. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm looking at test results for student zero the first time round, and I want to look at their test results for the first item. Okay, no, sorry, I got that completely wrong. Yes, I want to add it on to whatever the current sum is, so first time round that is zero, and I want to add it together to this item, and then I want to add that one on and then that one, and that one. Okay, so by looking at the row, I'm looking at the same student each time, and then I'm adding on their current test result. Sorry that I worded that completely terribly. So that means, so I'm just gonna put a little comment here. Um, student zero or student one was, it had scores of 10, 30, 82, and 49. So the first time round sum is equal to 0, its default value, plus 10. Second time round sum is now equal to 10 and we're going to add on the next value which is 30. So 10 and 30 means that sum is now equal to 40. Adding on to that 82 sum is now equal to, I'm terrible at maths, 122 and we're adding on to that 49. So that means that the final result is equal to 171. Okay, so hopefully and then, sorry, then what will happen is that stored in sum zero because that's the current row we're looking at. This inner loop will finish. It will bump out to the outer loop. Then it will start looking at sum for position one, which is student number one. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. I'll keep those comments in there for you. And what we can do actually, if we just move that up, so we'll cut that and I'm going to paste it in at the top of paint. Okay, and then for each of these rows, what we might do is we might also try to output the sum. X pos, comma y pos. 
This could totally end up in the wrong place. Let's have a quick look. Okay, and they're mushed together a bit. I'm sure you would do your own formatting and probably put in some lines and what have you. But it's got the 2D array items there and it's got the sum for each at the end there. So that's just a little quick example of, first of all, creating a 2D array, second of all, outputting the results on the screen, and third of all, tallying the sums of each of the rows. So hopefully that's a little bit of an explanation, a usable explanation, um, to help you on your way with 2D arrays. Good luck.